everyone. I'm Anna Marie Oak from Newfoundland, Canada, and I'm here today to do a class in inking with oils using my Dynasty uh, brushes. And the first piece I'm going to be using is, or doing, is the uh, Good Day on Clothes. And it's done on canvas. It's 11 by 14. And the second one we're going to be doing today is the outhouse with the trees and the clothesline. So these are the two pieces that I will be uh, painting with you today and showing you how easy and how fun this is. So we're going to begin, first of all, uh, with our canvases and they're done with the chalky gesso and three coats and also they're sprayed with the Americana uh, Decorate Americana Sealer. So it gives it a very nice finish and they're ready to go. They've been cured for over 48 hours and ready to go. These will be on my website um, starting next week. So you're able to order these from my website. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start with the brushes. And I'm just going to move you down here to the video so you can see. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to begin, first of all, uh, doing the supply list and showing you uh, the brushes that we're going to be using. Well, first of all, for the inking, we're going to be using the Bow Squirrel. And it's the number 10. And it's a black uh, gray handle and a black brush. These are beautiful uh, brushes. They have a nice full belly and the reservoir, which holds uh, decorate media paints or ink. We're going to be using the Black India, Black India ink, which is waterproof and uh, it's a art artistic value, so it's a very nice ink. We're also going to be using the Eye of the Tiger brushes. And uh, these are my fave. They're the three in a set, and they are also on my website. And we're using the three quarter, the number 12, and I'll be using a smaller brush, which is in the kit here. Uh, take it out so you can see. It's a number six round. Number six round. So we'll be using those three brushes with our oils, along with our inking brush. For our blending brushes, uh, we'll be using these as blenders also, the Eye of the Tiger. But I also like to use my IPC, a large or medium, and the pointed blender gives us a very nice uh, blend and able to rouge the oil paints throughout our piece. Very nice. For making the trees uh, and for doing a lot of hairs for our birds and animals, I like using my one half black silver by Dynasty. And I have those in three sets as well on my website and I love them. For the larger one for um, trees, the medium one, which is a five eighths, is nice for animal fur. And even the small one quarter is in the set for doing snowmen uh, eyes and little eyelashes. So that's pretty cool. I'm also going to show you the paints that we'll be using. Uh, it's water soluble oils, which are fun to use, user friendly, and uh, they're very nice, give a nice creamy effect. You can use any oil paint that you have at home. You don't necessarily need to um, have a, a, a certain brand, as long as you have the transparency. This is what you need, the gel transparency, which helps us uh, make our colors move more smoothly on our canvases. We'll need a uh, Payne's Gray, Alizarin Crimson, Burnt Umber, and Cad Yellow. And those are the colors that we, uh, we will need to make a variety of different colors. Brush blending. I mentioned to you uh, about a the ink. I've been using FW Brownie, but you can also use uh, a nice ink by Demco. It's a waterproof India ink. So any of those are fine to use. 
uh, with your paper towels, your uh, palette paper, uh, your deco art, black and white in Americana. I'll put that down here so you can see. Uh, you'll need that also. And you'll need a ruler, a pair of scissors, a pen and pencil, maybe a toothbrush for splattering or whatever. And as we move ahead, uh, you'll see how we're going to use those. So I hope that you can join me uh, for this class. It's going to be a lot of fun. And please visit my website for my brushes uh, from Dynasty. It's www.annamarieoakdesigns.com. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm back. Uh, I'm going to start doing the inking process first of our very first picture, which is the outhouse. So I'm going to just move my larger picture over here and I will have a little clip off it here by the side of me so that I can just, uh, you can probably take a glimpse of what I'm doing. Uh, the canvases have been prepared already. Uh, they've been gessoed three times and they've been sprayed three times, okay? So they're totally prepared. Uh, I do sell those on my website and in my studio with the frames and uh, they're prepared once you get them. You'll feel them and they're so silicone uh, feeling, really nice uh, surface. So they're ready to ink in. So I'm just gonna take my line drying and it's just a very simple uh, line drying off the outhouse. And I'm taking my gray paper and I'm not going to tape down because the residue from scotch tape uh, works against the oil paint when you oil paint. So when you put the tape on the canvas, uh, it's very hard to get that mark off and it'll show up unless you repainted the whole thing over. So I just like to hold my paper in the bottom left-hand corner, slide my uh, transfer or my graph, my black, or gray graphic paper underneath, and I'm ready to roll. Now for the outhouse, even though I've never in my lifetime living in Newfoundland saw a very straight, um, brand new outhouse. They're very old and very rugged, but I get my students to usually make the lines, and that way we can go from there. We will be going off the mark at times, so it's fine. So you're just going to take your ruler and draw in the basic outline, okay, that we have there. Just the basic. And I'm holding my piece, uh, uh, my um, tracing paper, my outline with my left hand in the bottom left hand corner. So I can move my uh, paper around if I need it to. And if I did come off my mark, you can always see through the tracing paper. You can just see that there. You just line it up again and you're good to go. So I will slide that underneath again, holding it with my bottom left hand. And I'm just going to make a little tree line, the little clothesline post, the line. Just gonna clip this up here now. I thought I had that out of the way, but I didn't, but we're fine. We're gonna, wires on my camera are, there we go. I'm just gonna skip that here and set it away. I am going to trace in the stockings and they look funky shape socks. They're usually made hand knit with old sheep's wool and stuff so they're very loose and not very uh, even which is the look we want to get okay on the bottom um you'll see a pan or a clothes bucket that's what we want traced out a couple little stones and they're just uh they look like c's can see that on your line drawing. There you go. And I'll hold it 
on the bottom right hand corner now and I'll just go over here to make my line for my uh, there you go just for my uh, tree line and that one is done okay that's all we need to do for that one uh, just one thing I forgot and I'm looking at my picture that's why it's good to have your photograph right by you when you do this uh, is to fill in the moon we need graphite paper underneath that to do that don't we there we go we're going to fill in that moon that's it for that okay while we're in the tracing out mode, um, I'm going to trace out my good day on close, which is this one here. No, which is this one here. This is the one that we're going to do also this evening is a good day on close for or frozen jeans. Pardon me, I call this one. The good day on clothes was the quilt, the quilt one. This is frozen jeans, okay? So we'll do this one because there's a few little extra techniques that I thought would be really great for us to, uh, to go over in class. So I'm just going to bring my other piece in front of me, other canvas, and I'm going to take my line drawing. And this line drawing is... Uh, as you can see, it's only a little portion of the house, the window, the jeans, the clothesline, and uh, that's about it for this drawing. So we'll, everyone is saying, well, where is the rest of it? Well, that's the big secret. That's the fun part of these pieces. They're quick and easy, but they look like you really spent a lot of time doing them. And that's the look that we want to achieved. I will take my ruler again and just make a line down here for the side of the house. There you go. And I'll trace out my clothesline. Clothesline post. And then I'll outline my jeans. And if you've ever had your jeans out on the clothesline, and, or your mom had your jeans on your clothesline, you came home from school, and that was the thing that we had to do, was bring in our jeans, bring them downstairs, and they could stand up. I never really could get the concept of that. But anyway, it was something that everybody did. And yeah, they were pretty stiff from the cold, icy, winters. There we go. I'll just do the big long vamps. Okay. And I'm just going to put in a little line here for the outline, for the tree line, and a little line here for the upper tree line. Okay. I'm going to move my graphite paper over on the opposite side. And I'm going to trace in just the window. And you can see that the window comes right off the canvas. I like this look. Um, you know, it, it's everyone's preference. It just gives it a little... There you go. And then I will do the line down here and down there. So it's perfect. Now we both, we have the two of the pieces outlined. We'll place our paper and our graphite there. We're done with that. And now what we're going to do is start our inking process. I think I will begin with my uh, frozen jeans first. And I'm going to lay my picture here so you have a little eye to it. There we go. I'm just going to get one paper towel, fold it in half. There we go. And I'm using a number uh, four full squirrel 1827 liner, and it's a reservoir brush. You can see the wide belly 
which holds the ink and the liner bristles. They are beautiful brushes and really fun to work with. So I'm going to use my ink, which I have here in Sudenko India ink, which is waterproof and artistic value. It um, never dulls or runs or whatever. So I like to pour, uh, we're doing two pieces. So I say a quarter of a small little shooter cup I had there. So that's about all you need. The beauty about this uh, ink too, what you don't have or what you don't use, you uh, can go back into your bottle. There's, it's no worries about it drying out or anything like that. So, okay, we're going to start. I'm going to, first of all, dip my, I'm going to put this over my canvas so you can see what I'm doing. I'm dipping my bristles down right to the ferrule, right to the silver part. Is, so it's soaking up into that belly. Then I'm going to my piece and I'm just going to tilt my piece a little to the side and I'm going to start inking out my house now. You're saying to yourself, oh my goodness, she went right off that side of that house. You know what? I did that intentionally because to show you that this is an old wooden house and it doesn't really matter because right here, we're going to be filling it in. When I fill in, I dip down into my, my belly and there you go. You continue on with your inking. And I'm going to fill in those windows or those panes of glass there. So you can see that your ink, uh, it does, it goes a long, long ways, you know, before you need to uh, reload. There you go. And uh, I think I'll put a little, little separation there in those windows there. Okay, so we're going to do the boards on the old siding of this old house. So we'll lower our brush. And if you want to, you can, uh, you know, whichever way you feel comfortable, okay? You don't have to have it straight up and down. It, whichever way that you feel comfortable, way that you should uh, work. So I'm just dipping down my bristles and put that back so you can see me doing that. And I'm just taking off the excess. And I'm gonna start from the left-hand side, come down and go over. See that? I'm just making the wood grain so it's not even. Because I'm not meaning for it to be even. You will realize, too, that this is going to be all filled in with oil paint. So your basic outline is going to look very stark to you right now. But we're okay with that. Okay? If I'm okay with it, you're okay with it. So it just comes a bit of wood grain. And you can see what I'm doing. I'm kind of dipping my belly down on the canvas so that it makes a wider area to give the knot holes. I'll come to the end of it there and now I'm going to make my board. And you can see that I uh, intentionally did this these little off marks here. I like that. And if I wanted to add the tip of my brush to give it a little bit of wood grain, I'm okay with that as well. Okay, it's an old wooden house. I don't know whose house it was, but it was, uh, I think it was in the Woody Point area, actually, or the Cowhead area. It was around a point. And I thought, oh, that looks cool. And it was in the winter when I uh, took a picture of this, actually. So we're going to continue on inking in our window. There you go. And you can see how really neat this is looking. Okay. Now, if you're fine with this for your wood grain, it's okay. Um, 
I'm going to just bring my picture here for a moment to show you that you can see that I didn't sweat it because the oil paint is going to go on it and it's going to hide up a lot of the, a lot of the areas there. So it's fine. Um, I have a little trick to show you as well. The beauty of using India ink is that you can take out boo-boos. So say if I had a mark there that, oh, I didn't like, or I went over, or, you know, I just didn't do what I had intended to do. What I do is rinse my brush before I lay it down into my ammonia okay and just give it a little cleaning and lay it down flat on your paper towel and then i take my boo-boo fixer which is the ammonia and i take a q-tip and i dip it into the ammonia into the ammonia dab it on the paper towel clean paper towel and an area that i want it to remove there you go, voila. I'm turning my Q-tip around and I'm removing it. So this ink can be all removed with ammonia if you want it to, it could, okay? So I'm just gonna do it again, dip my Q-tip, dab it on a paper towel, and say this line here, I didn't want that one. But make sure that you're turning, turning your Q-tip around as you're moving along, okay? because that uh, you'll only be getting the ink going in the same spot. So there you go. That's a little tip on how to fix boo-boos. But you know, most boo-boos, I kind of play with them and leave them there. Okay, so I'm gonna load up my reservoir. I love these brushes. These are on my website um, and you can see those. If you go on my website, annemarieoakdesigns.com, uh, along with my other uh, Dynasty brushes, so very neat. Okay, um, I'm not going to outline the tree lines, okay, because that's just a marking there to see where I want to place my, uh, my trees. But I'm going to go ahead now and make the clothesline. There you go. And I'm going to make that post. And this is like a wire uh, on the side of the house. That I think it was just a big nail that was there and the clothesline was just uh, attached there, actually. It was a very cold, wintry day when I took these pictures. So you can see that the way the jeans are, they look like they're frozen, actually. And I'm just going to outline you can see how neat those brushes work on the, on the canvas. It's such a nice smooth surface that it uh, just glides right along. And there you go. We're going to do the other pair of jeans. And I'm holding my brush midway, uh, not way up on the tail up on the top of the tail or the tiger by the tail I like to say I'm holding it midsection because I do want to have a little bit more control so that's why I'm I'm doing that so we're inking it in these are such fun classes um, to do virtual classes uh, are fun too but you know you you miss the uh, interaction with people. But the beauty about these uh, uh, virtual classes and the Zoom is that you can take your link, you can do watch it at your own discretion. You can just get up in the morning with a cup of coffee and say, okay, I'm going to watch an hour of that now and start my piece and then turn it off. So it works well for people who are busy and, you know, have something on that they can't make it for that day there we go and there's jeans and of course these long worsted 
I think that that's the name I was trying to look for. Worcester socks. There you go. And many of you who are painting this with me are going to paint this so know what a Worcester sock looks like. Okay. So that's that. Uh, at this point, I'd like to, um, so let me see here now. I'm going to, yeah, I think what I'm going to do is sign my piece right here. So that'll give it a chance to dry to. I'd like to sign in the bottom right hand corner, not too far low, too far down, but about right here. That way, once you uh, got the frame on it, it's not hidden. Okay. There you go. And that's that. Now I'm just going to rinse my brush into my ammonia, give it a little swirl. As you can see, we're not using water for this. Ammonia cleans out your bristles and it um, until you can wash it, right? So that's that's the beauty about that. Okay, so that part is done. Now, I'm going to put this one aside and we're gonna go back to our outhouse. Just let that dry a little. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're going to uh, do the outhouse first, because you can see here, we always try to ink in or paint in from the background. Uh, versus foreground. So we need to have our outhouse, our clothesline, our little posts and that done first, okay? And then we'll do the, the rest of it after the trees and stuff. So that's what we're going to concentrate on here now. Okay, so we're going to load up our brush again and our ink. And like I say, you can turn your piece to whatever way works for you. Uh, I like holding my finger down and just starting on my left hand side. And you can see I'm making lines and I'm going a little heavier. And to go heavier, you're just pushing down on that belly of that brush and make your door. And let's do that moon. Okay, I think what we'll do uh, first is we'll do finish our outline, our lining on our uh, outhouse. Okay, so we're going to load our ink, our brush again, and we're going to start up here. And this goes up and down. The grain work goes up and down. So you follow the grain work and you touch down where you want to to make the old wooden look to this outhouse. Okay. There you go. I'm just hit and missing. I'm not doing this uh, very, I'm uh, not being very precise because I'm intentionally not being precise. Okay. This is an old outhouse and there's no need to sweat small stuff. Okay, there you go. Now I'm gonna to go to the door and I'm going to fill in the door a little bit. That's got wood grain on it as well. There you go. Any of you who are watching this, uh, when you when you do uh, play it back, you're able to paint along with me because it's giving you plenty of time to um, do the steps and to the uh, to finish. It do take a little bit of practice uh, with the the brush, but it's such a neat neat brush to use that you'll you'll just love. It. Okay, there's a couple little uh, hinges over here. They look like arrows, there you go. And I'm just filling them in very lightly 
with the uh, very tip of my of my brush. There you go. I'm also going to fill in that moon. Okay, so I'm only going to use the very tip of my liner brush. I'm not going to dip it down. I'm just going to start from the top of the moon and bring it around. Okay, and you're going to fill that in fairly well solid. It's going to go solid black. There you go. Okay, so those are hinges, they're all on there, and that's our moon. Some, something here now on my computer, there we go. There we go. Okay, so you can see that very plainly. It shows up really well on the camera, I must say. It looks pretty stark. And that's the look that we're, uh, we're trying to achieve. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead with the clothesline. India ink um, dries fairly fast. Uh, the thinner the line, of course, the quicker it dries. So the knot holes and the solid black will take a little bit more time than what the thinner lines do. But it dries fairly quickly, which is good. You're able to uh, seal it and there you go. I'm making those funny looking socks. There's a place on the Northern Peninsula, I think it's Trout River. Um, if you go there, everyone has clothes lines in summertime at tourist seasons and they put their hand knitted mitts and socks on the clotheslines and people like tourists will come by to uh, buy them and it's pretty cool. Makes it very colorful, which is very cool. There you go. A few little pairs of mittens there. Okay, now we're going to outline that clothes basket there and that's good. And also um, we're just going to add the stones on the bottom off the walkway walking up to the to the outhouse. Okay. For the bottom of the front part uh, off the uh, doorway. I'm going to move this up a little bit. There you go. Uh, I would like to see uh, a little bit more of a base there and the wood the wood uh, pickets or the wood the wood pieces are kind of uneven there and that that's the look I'm I'm trying to get okay so it's kind of trace along and just go up into the wood part alrighty and that's that's the look it just kind of finishes that part off a little even though it's going to be covered up with the trees and the snow of course just gives it a, a nicer look. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush out again in my um, ammonia. And ammonia is what cleans the uh, Indian ink, so it's pretty good. I used to use uh, Windex too, which had ammonia, which was a good idea, but that was blue. And sometimes it would stain my canvas, so I, I found the, uh, the clear ammonia, so. I had that available too, also in my studio, if anybody needs any to do it. Okay, now the next step we're gonna do, I think we'll do the trees on this piece here. We'll continue with the outhouse, okay? Um, I'm gonna start in the back here on this tree line. And the brush I'm gonna use is my half inch, black silver rake, okay? It's a brush that has the, uh, the bristles all chipped out of it here, and it's, uh, it's a wonderful brush I love for doing trees, especially with the ink. So it, we start with a dry brush, uh, even with our liner, 
We never dip in water, okay, till we're finished to wash our brushes with soap and water. So we're going to uh, load up our black silver, right? And you don't want this to be overly wet. And you can make uh, lines if you want it to. I don't because, of course, when it's your own design, it's a little different, you, you know. But say if you wanted to make a few strokes up and down to see where you want it to place, place the trees, you could, okay? I like to start with my brush perpendicular to my canvas, okay? I'm straight up and down perpendicular. And I'm just touching the very top and I'm turning, turning, and I'm, I call it ticky tacking, okay? Ticky tacking, making my bristles. And I'm not pushing very hard, okay? I'm only uh, more or less letting those very top part of those bristles uh, splay out, okay? And of course, Newfoundland trees are so sparse that. We don't need to make them full like pines and stuff, okay? We'll load up our brush again and we'll go to the right hand side of our outhouse and we're going to start on the top perpendicular and turning, turning, turning. There you go. You're turning, you're going back and forth to the bottom and then I like to just come back up again, okay? To make those trees. Now, as you know, uh, some of our trees, like I have on my piece here, I'm just going to put this over so you can see. Over here on the very edge, they're very sparse. Actually, they only look like sticks with a couple little, uh, little pine needles on them or spruce needles, whichever you had there. So we just kind of go up and down to make sticks and that so you don't have to go back and forth. Just up and down, there we go, okay. I like to finish the bottoms of the trees there and I do that with my brush by just coming sliding down on an angle there and I can do that over here as well on an angle. Okay, so that's our background trees. Like I say, if you want to put a few sticks in the distance, it's up to you, okay? You don't need to cover in too much because of our blue sky there, as you can see in the background. It's going to do a lot of cover up for us, okay? Um, I noticed that my, you may not see it on, on the camera, but my moon is starting to uh, fade out a little. So I just, I probably didn't put enough paint on it. So with this brush that I have in my hand, I'm just filling it in, just to cover it in another little bit. Okay, I think I'm going to start in this tree over here. Uh, on the side, it's in the background. You can probably see on this little photograph here. And this one right here in the background is where we're going to go next because that is it's in the background and that's what we need to do next so i'm just going to go right here and i'm going to go right up right into those background trees because this is the foreground we're coming down to the foreground now you don't you don't have to be too fussy with this you know it's a an old spruce tree it's not going to matter I see a little tree here off in distance or in the side left hand side that I want to do. So that's fun to do. And I'm going to do the side one to the side of our outhouse. And I want this one to be a little bigger because it's, of course, right in the foreground. Okay, so you can come out a little ways. Add a little bit more ink there if you want. There you go. There's a little tree over here by our uh, clothes bucket there. So we can add that in as well. And another little tree right here. Okay. 
So Bobby will add to you. With this, it doesn't matter. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a win-win, whichever way. So if we're looking at our photograph, which comes in your pattern packet as well, um, you can see, oh, I got, I'm looking now, I've got my trees in, my spruces, and I'm, I'm done. I think what I'll do, even though the snow is covering the top of the outhouse, I'm just going to give that a little thick, thicker top there. So it make the snow look like it's landing on something. So just sticking up that line there. Okay, so I think that's our inking for this one. And don't forget to sign your piece. We do all the inking before we take our pieces outside to spray. Once we spray, you can't remove anything then. It's completely sealed, okay? So we, we sign it first and then, and I'll rinse out my Black silver a little bit there. I'm going to just lay this one here to dry and we're going to pick up our frozen jeans. Okay, just going to move that up a little bit so everybody can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so for the frozen jeans, we're going to start. I think what I'm going to do is fill in those the window panes first. Then I'll do the trees in the background. Then I'll do the trees in front of the house or the, the, uh, the wooden house. And then I'll just do the small little uh, twigs although with the red berries on them, okay? So that's what we're going to do next. And I'm, I'm pleased with my wood grain. I'm fine with that. You know, even after you finish your piece and it's sealed and you have it in your frame and you have it on your wall, you may look at it and say, hmm, I wish I had made more wood grain in a certain area. You can do that. You can, everything has been sealed. Your oil paint, everything is done. If you want to take your ink, add a few little markings in on it. So you're never, you're never really stuck, okay? You can always go back and uh, add a few lines where you want to, okay? So, we're going to go first with the window pane. And I'm going to low, I'm using my, my rake. There we go. And I'm coming down and filling in. Now, as I'm filling in with, um, and I'm doing the outside, uh, left-hand side first, okay? Now I'm going to go down here do all the left-hand side first, left panes first. Now you'll notice you're running out of ink, but I want to run out of a bit of ink because I want to be able to see the white canvas inside one or two panes, okay? To give it, we want to see a highlight, okay? And that's the look. So you can see I load it up and I want to see a bit of a highlight there to make it look like there's somebody home or just to give it a highlight. So especially in the winter time, um, as us Newfoundlanders know, we uh, get a lot of ice on our panes and stuff and you can almost see like a misty, um, you can see in the bottom here on, on the piece I did and it'll be on your pattern packet as well. I'm not sure if you can see it plain but where the snow is covering is where not enough ink is there, and I'm okay with that. I'm totally okay with that. Okay, so that's good for the windows, we're good. Okay, now we're gonna start with the background little trees, and they're very small in the background there. So we're going to, like I say, you can mark them in or you can just go for it. Just make sure these trees are in be behind this house, okay? So make sure you don't put them over on the house. Some, if you want to, you could even put a piece of masking tape there or you can just uh, try to be a little careful. It's, it's fine. These trees in the distance aren't as uh, large as what we did on the other piece. They're just kind of 
little tiny shrubs that are in the distance. Some are a bit heavier and thicker than others. And some more I just kind of added like sticks that were, as we all know too often, where our woods looks to us when we we're out on a hike or whatever we can see, especially in the winter time. Very little uh, trees. Okay, um, right here I had a little line which I wanted my my uh, tree line to come down, and I just brushed it along there a little, and I'm fine with that. Right here I added a few more trees there in this midsection above the jeans. And let's start in the middle this time and we can go out and on either side, just make those little ticky tacky trees. These brushes are awesome for making those little trees. The bristles stand up so well. I love them for doing a lot of my uh, florals, a lot of my leaves, a lot of my trees. And uh, even snowmen, you know, and, and hair on Santa, Santa's hair. And, all that is uh, really cool for doing that. Nutcrackers, this year is going to be a Nutcracker Christmas, I'm sure. I love painting Nutcrackers and doing them. Uh, classes in those too, so it's a lot of fun. Okay, that's it for the trees there. We're going to come down to our house, and I'm going to do the tree uh, on the left-hand side here first, okay? So you can see that in the pattern. So I'm loading up. A little ink goes a long way, as you can see there. And I'm just going to pretend that that's a white in the background, but it's a window. What brings it out is the snow when we uh, place in the snow very last month, because everything is sealed. So that's what brings it uh, more to life as a wintry scene. Okay. Come right to the bottom. There we go. Let's tree there and I'm going to make another little tree on the side bringing it down coming out there you go there we are okay so we have our trees in there um, our little stick trees, we're going to um, do those with our uh, uh, liner, with our full squirrel liner reservoir brush. So I think we have our trees in there. We're good. I'm going to rinse my, br my bristles, my brush there again. And I'm going to go back to my liner. And now I'm going to put in those... Uh, those really skinny twigs that have the red berries on them. So I load up my liner. I like to start with where, from where a tree grows, okay? I, as a rule of thumb, it grows in the ground upwards and just kind of come up. And you don't have to stay straight because you're going to come away from the base, okay, and just make some little twigs out like so. And this is where we, you can make them a little thicker if you want to, or a little thinner, but I always come from where the tree grows, which would be the bottom outwards. What I mean is we never start out and bring them in, okay? Our natural range of motion is to go this way, away from you. So it's better to start down and you get more of a natural look. Okay, now I'm looking at my piece. I think I'm gonna put a few more twigs over here too, to kind of balance it a little. Alrighty, we can always add a few little berries there as well. Okay. And I think we're good. I'm just checking. We've got our jeans done, our trees done. I think we're good for our um, uh, wood grain. We're dark enough there. Most of the darkening comes in with the uh, oil paint anyway, so we're, we're good. 
Okay, so once we get to this point now, we're going to rinse out our bristles again, and we're going to let this dry for a minute. I think our piece here may be a little drier. Yeah, it's going to take a little minute. I right, we're going to take a little break, but before we do, uh, I'm going to show you how to spray. Uh, we use our Americana, and it's a matte finish, okay? So, um, yeah, there you go. You can see it better there. Uh, the matte finish before, and we always do this outside, okay? We know that we don't spray inside because of the fumes and stuff, but this is what's going to seal our ink before we add the oil paint, okay? So before we uh, spray, always take our can of spray, and you can hear a ball rolling inside. That ball is stirring up our varnish. Okay, the Americana uh, I like uh, using in that it doesn't yellow uh, and it's very nice, but make sure it's a matte. Krylon has another one too, uh, 4313, I think the number is. That one is good too, uh, as long as that it doesn't yellow, yellow your piece. And how we spray, I'm just going to take my piece here and show you. You're gonna take it outside. You're gonna hold it. Let's see if I can show you. Yeah. And you're going to go about five feet away, pardon me, five or six inches away from the piece and spray it. And this way, up and down and across ways. Let it dry in the wind, just let it dry a little, and then do it again. Okay, so we're going to take a little break now, a little five there minute we go. break. We're back. Uh, just I wanted to give you a little reminder, in case your ink isn't quite dry when you went out to spray, take a hair dryer. I just took a hair dryer and I just kind of dried my piece a little because if it's really wet, of course, the spray will probably dislodge your ink or whatever. So just hit it with the hair dryer and uh, take it outside and do your spraying, okay? And even leave it outside for a few minutes longer, okay? So we're good to go. I'm going to begin uh, with the frozen jeans and we're going to start with our uh, oil process, okay? So I'm just gonna place my uh, inking brushes on a paper towel. Actually, I put a little bit of ammonia on my paper towel and I just lodged them there until I was ready to tend to them. Uh, for our uh, paint, you can use palette paper if you like, but I like to use a, a styrofoam plate because I specifically um, load my color on the paper plate in a way that um, is just a little trick and it makes life a little easier for us, okay? So it's all about the little tips on how to make life easy. Wouldn't that be something? Okay, so we're going to begin first with our gel transparency. And this is in a tube. Sometimes you can use linseed oil if that's what you have there. Just put a little bit on your palette. I'm going to uh, look at my uh, styrofoam plate as a clock, okay? And I'm going to begin with a 12 o'clock, which is up there where 12 o'clock would be on a clock. I am going to go around the clock. So at 2 o'clock, I'm going to place my burnt umber. And we, um, when I was doing the, the pen and inking years ago with Mary Owens and stuff, we did a lot of pen and inking. And I, I came back home and I was doing it and Jordan said, I, I'd say, just the size of a chocolate chip. And he said, well, mom, that looks like a chunky chocolate chip to me. And that's true, it does look like a chunky chocolate chip. Even that amount is enough to probably to do two to three pictures. So that's plenty. Also, oh, so that's two o'clock. Then at four o'clock, we're going to come down and put the pain spray. And you just squeeze it out, put your cap back on, place it over on the side. 
Uh, if most of you are using uh, acrylic and that, it takes a little getting used to using oils because a little bit goes a long ways. And especially when we rouge, which color, we're not adding uh, thick colors. This is a lizard crimson and probably at seven o'clock there, add a lizard crimson, put your cap on. And last but not least is our very important color, which we like to use as a mixer, is our cad yellow. And I don't use a lot of cad yellow. I just like to use it with a little bit with Payne's Gray to make uh, tree coloring and things like that. So uh, we just use a little bit. So there it is. And I'm just gonna place it here so you can see. Uh, gel transparency. It's up at 12 o'clock. And you know, if you wanted to, what we do is sometimes take a pen, gel transparency, okay? BU for burnt umber. Payne's Gray, PG, Alizarin Crimson, AC, and Cad Yellow, CY. That's sometimes, you know, until you get used to looking at the colors and when you start working with them, you know what, what colors you're working with, okay? So there we go. Now, the next important thing, we're gonna lay that to our right, okay, right here, is our Q-tip holder. I like these round containers. Do not use a paper cup. Uh, a paper cup got a smaller base and a wider top. Therefore, when you place your brush, your brushes in them, they tend to tip, okay? These are the Q-tip holders. These were at the Dollar Tree, actually, that held the, the Q-tips, and they're great. You can place them there. Our brushes that we use for picking up the color are Eye the Tiger. It's the number four round I like to use. And these are acoustic. Uh, by Dynasty, and I use these for my batiking when I use them for hot wax, but I love them for scrubbing on oils also. So that's a really neat brush as well. And there, I, I, the acoustic, I think, I don't have on my website, but I do have them here for sale in my studio. So it's only to email me and I can uh, get those to you. Okay, so those are our two brushes, and they have to always stay in the container, okay, while we're using them. This takes a little, little getting used to, uh, you know, first, and but when you start using it, you can see how everything works and, uh, and you'll be fine. Okay, so the very first thing I'm going to do is pick up my acoustique, my uh, bristle, it's a white bristle brush, and I'm going to go into my gel transparency and push down those bristles. So I'm incorporating that gel transparency in my bristles, okay? We're not using water for any of this. We don't use any water, okay? So we just use the gel. And I didn't do a lot. You can see I just kind of pushed it down and incorporated it into my bristles. I'm then going to do the sky, okay? Now the sky color, I love Payne's Gray for my skies. Um, if we were in Daytona, uh, now we'd use a probably cerulean blue or a, a nice pretty, pretty blue, but our skies are more gray tones. And uh, so that's why I like Payne's Gray for this piece. So when we load up our brush, I just touch, pull out a little. See that? I'm just pulling out a little. And that's how much I have on my bristles, not very much. Okay, I'm gonna to go to my piece. I'm gonna to go to the very base where the trees are. And I'm going to just burnish, what we like to call burnish the color towards the base for the trees, okay? Bringing it up into the sky because you want to see a bit of this, a bit of this up into the sky as well. Also, don't forget down here in those little trees there too for the snow. Okay, put a little bit for the snow. I went back to add a little bit more Payne's Gray 
and I want a little bit for the snow banks, okay? And I just come down, burnish it on a little, okay? And that's it. I'm gonna place my brush back into my container. I do this because to, that if you didn't, if you laid your brush down like we do with our blenders, you would have paint everywhere, okay? So that kind of just keeps things tidy and that's, that's where we want it to be. Now we're going to blend this color. And you can see on my picture here, it blends up into the sky, okay? And the snow comes down, okay? Also, I'm gonna make a reference to this moon, okay? So that's a really cool way of putting in the moon, and I'm gonna show you that. But first of all, we're going to go ahead, and I'm gonna use my Eye of the Tiger, which is my three-quarter, and I found these really, I, I love them for my patio, my oils there. And I love them. You can use them for acrylics. They're great for that. But I like them for using with my, my uh, blending, my oil paint. And I'm going to show you how I use them, okay? I'm going to go up to my, my bottom where my trees are in the paint. And I'm going to swirl, okay? swirl swirl that color up in that sky now if i want you to hit that house okay it's going to look like you made a boo-boo but don't worry about it okay there you go there you go up into the sky okay you're tapping like you would a deer foot stippler okay so your heel you can see that your heel and toe and you're tapping up into the sky you're then going to take a paper towel and you're going to have a paper towel by the side of you you're going to swirl that paint off into that paper towel to clean your bristles okay now i feel that doing that there now i had too much paint on my bottom of my trees, I can hardly see my trees, okay? So I'm gonna take my paper towel and I'm gonna remove. See that? See how quick you can fix this with oil paint? We wouldn't be able to do this if we didn't seal our surface. We'd be in a real bad fix right now, okay? So I'm, I'm glad I did put too much on because I wanted to show you, there you go. Okay, so we just throw that one in our garbage can there. Now we'll swirl again. We'll just tap it in and swirl. Okay, there you go. The sky. And of course, we'll come down to put snow on the horizontal. Okay, they're just banks of snow that are just kind of uh, blown every which way. I went over my jeans because I, uh, I wanted to. I wanted to show you how I'm going to take it off, okay? So we take our brush and we'll wipe it off again. We'll swirl it around on our paper towel to clean it. This brush we can lay down on our paper towel because we, uh, it's okay, it doesn't have a lot of oil paint on it. So I'm gonna take my Q-tip and I'm going to remove that paint from the house, okay? And from our jeans. So I take a little bit of that gel transparency on my palette there and wipe it in. And now I'm going to remove, there you go. I'm gonna remove that paint turning my q-tip around there you go may need one or two q-tips to remove that there you go the gel transparency now there you go that's pretty good our brown is going to go over it so we're fine Okay, now well, I mentioned the fact about the moon. Okay, I took a Q-tip 
that I had there. And I put a little bit of gel on it and I just place my finger and I want my moon to be about right there. And I swirled it around and made my moon. Okay, now it's a little stir. So I just took my brush with no paint on this. This is a blending brush. And I kind of slid over, tapped in a little bit of that over it just to soften. There you go. Clean off that bit of paint. Now we can wipe out our jeans because the snow banks are behind the jeans. And a little bit of transparency on the jeans just helps us, uh, helps our paint slide a little bit more easily. There you go. Okay, now uh, let's do one of the jeans, it's a darker color. I like to get a, a few colors on there. And we'll go into our um, gel. Now we're not wiping off this. I have to turn off my, I don't know, there's something comes on my computer there. So I'm just going to, there we go, perfect. A little bit of gel transparency, and there's enough paint on that brush to apply it to our jeans a little down one side. You can see I'm not putting a lot on it. I'm just more or less adding a little color here and there. Putting my brush back into my container, and I'm going to take my small uh, blending brush and which just the eye of the tiger number 12 and these come in a set i have the round brush the large three quarter and the number 12 which i love to use for my oil paintings they're great there you go so you can see how i just kind of went down i left a little bit of a highlight there for the jeans i didn't want to cover it all in i am going to Clean it off on my paper towel again and just lay them there for now. Okay, so that one there is good. I think we'll go ahead with the outhouse sky too, so our colors won't be so messy there. And that just gives us a little repeat on uh, what we just did. Okay, I'm fine with that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead with our paint spray again, and uh, our, our brush, our uh, bristle brush, or scrubber, I like to call it sometimes. And I've got enough gel transparency on, this, on these bristles now, so I'm okay with that. I'm just gonna go ahead with another little bit of paint spray, and I'm gonna start down in the, where the trees are, burnish a little bit on, come up where the, the house or the outhouse is there, and you can see how I'm just placing it on very easily. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the snow. There we go. Do the same thing. I place my brush back into my container, take up my blender, my eye of the tiger, and I'm going to tap into those trees and swirl. Use my, my brush like a deer foot stippler and swirl that around. And like I say, if I hit, I'd rather hit the outhouse than stay away from it because it'll look like a, a halo. You really pick up where you uh, didn't put the, the color. So it's better to hit it, then remove it and take it out after. Same thing there. You're tapping and swirling. So you're using your eye the tiger like a deer foot stippler, heel toe, tap, 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 tap. You're tapping that paint into it and swirling, okay? So really, you're just rouging the color. You're not adding thick color. You're just adding a rouging. It gives almost like, I always thought, it, I felt it 
gave me like a watercolor effect, which watercolor was my first love. So I, uh, it just what it reminded me of. Okay, we're going to swirl that off on the paper towel. And I wanna see a moon there again. So we're gonna do the moon. And I'm gonna show you where I placed the moon right here, okay? You can see the differences in color. I used a, a Weber, a Payne's Gray, and this is the Lucas Berlin, which is a company that I'm, I'm trying out, and that's a Payne's Gray too, but it's a little darker. So different oil paints uh, have a different, uh, uh, they all have different colors, so it's, you know, it's uh, hard to say. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of gel transparency on my Q-tip. I'm going to come in behind that tree this time. See how cool that is? That looks like a really night sky. I love the look of that. There you go. Make a big moon. Let's make a big moon. I think October 31st, we're going to get a full moon, Halloween, right? You can even turn your Q-tip around. And I'm going to take my brush again, and I'm just going to tap over in that moon because I don't want it to look too stark alrighty so yeah I'm fine with that that looks cool and we didn't make a, a mess or didn't go over too much on our uh, outhouse so we did a great job there so I'm just going to clean up that area with my q-tip there we go perfect Okay, so the next thing, I'm going to continue with this one, I think. And I'm going to um, go with the outhouse. Okay, so now we're going to use our palette knife. And I'm going to, that's why I like the paper plates too. I can pick it up in my hand and easy to uh, mix colors with, okay. Uh, I'm going to take the burnt umber and when I pick up, uh, oil paint I come from behind okay and go to a nice clean area see that I picked it up from behind and went to a clean area I then took a little tiny bit of the Payne's gray because I wanted to change my burnt umber into a more of a walnut okay now when we look at oil paints and, and this is how we um, blend our colors. There's no swirling, okay? Don't go swirling. We have to really get in there and blend our colors. Ooh, I got a nice, nice walnut. And you know, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get because when you, if you mix a, a oil paint, you may never mix the same color again. You may become close, but uh, you may not. What I've, I've often done if I was late in the night and I was doing a piece and I mixed a really nice walnut color and I said, oh, I'm not finished what I was doing. I would scrape it up, put it on a little piece of saran wrap, twist it, make it a ball, put it in the fridge or the freezer. Next day, I would take a needle, punch that ball, squeeze out my oil paint to finish my house. So I've, I've done that from time to time. So how we see our colors is this way. We can scrape our color from our spot and that's our true color. The burnt umber, I'm gonna take my finger and just touch it and put it on the, on the paint edge. You can see the burnt umber straight is like a cinnamony color, but I want it more of a darker walnut. I can even go with another little little on the toe of my palette knife a little bit extra if I wanted to okay yeah we're good this is a really nice burn color okay I'm happy with this so we just push it back onto our spot now we clean our palette knife before we put it down we go in between a paper towel and pinch off the color see that your palette knife is now clean, okay? So pinch it off, lay it down on your table. If you didn't do that, you would be, have 
oil paint everywhere and you wouldn't be a happy camper. So when you're oil painting, it's just a few things to remember because it's not like acrylic, okay? It's a different medium. Okay, now I'm going to take my uh, um, white bristle, my acoustic by Dynasty, and I am going to take a paper towel and I'm going to go in between that paper towel and pitch off whatever color I have there, okay? You don't need to wash this brush or anything. One color counteracts the other. So once you load up your color, and I think, I, I feel that we have enough uh, gel transparency on it, but we can always go with another little bit and just completely load your brush, okay? And I'm going to go to my uh, outhouse and I'm going to just add color, burnish it down, going from the top down. And the darkest color you can see on your photograph or on the picture that uh, the darkest color is underneath the roof and on the sides and on top of the doorway, okay? So that's where the shades are. So we just come down, back and forth, shade in that area there. Because the highlights are just where the color is burnished off, right? So there you go. Put my brush back into my container. Take my Eye of the Tiger. Now I'm going to use my brush, not like we did in the skyline, okay? That was like a deer foot stippler, which is what we did. We're going to use wood grain. We're going to fill in the wood grain. So we're going to use our Eye of the Tiger on the side or on the chisel edge, okay? We're going to bring it down. You can even use your smaller one if you feel sometimes you have more control. Okay, which moves it around a little bit better. There you go. And just bring it back and forth. Now, there'd be times too that as you're bringing this color back and forth, back down, it'll all be the same depending on how much color you put on there. So if that happens, you just take a Q-tip and I put my finger on it and I go up and down. There you go. Turning my Q-tip, removing some color if I want some color removed. Okay. There you go. And I'm going to add another little bit of color on that doorway. Okay, we have some nice barn wood color made there. I'm liking the barn wood. So you can see how I just burnished. I just burnished back and forth. There we go. Now, anyone that has wanted to do this class and don't have the oil paints and don't have anywhere to get them. I do sell the oil paints and I also uh, use a little, the cubbies like this for the two sets. Uh, your colors would be in it, your colors, your gel transparency, and your bit of ink to ink in the pictures. Okay, so you can always get it there if you're going to do a, if you, you know, feel you want to do a couple pieces and didn't have any oil paint. Especially now, it's so hard to get anything or whatever, so we try to work with what we have. Okay, I'm okay with that. Okay, that looks nice. I got a nice dark area there. As long as you don't see any uh, lines, like, um, you know, really stark marks. And as long as you, if you did go out over your snow, take a Q-tip and remove it with a bit of gel transparency, okay? It comes off really, really easily. Okay, I'm gonna probably add a little bit to this little bucket and do the same thing. Now, see, I just made a boo-boo there. I put my 
blending brush into my Q-tip holder. Don't do that. Lay your blenders down on your paper towel, okay? And make sure you keep cleaning out your blenders, okay? There you go. Also, I use a, uh, my IPC. That's what I'm missing. I love my IPC. Um, this is a large point. You can use a medium one, but I love these for blending, okay? And you just go and you blend. There you go. I was trying to figure out why I was, it was, it was blending good, but I, the majority of it, but just some fine tuned blending. It softens a few areas and especially for around smaller areas like that. It's good. Now you clean this one same way on your paper towel, blend it out and leave it there. These are your blenders. Okay. Now we're going to go with stockings. So we use bright colors in Newfoundland. Of course, we have a lot of nice colors, a lot of bright colors. So I'm going to take a little bit of red, alizarin, and a little bit of yellow. And we're going to make a nice orangey color. Okay, there we go. Add another little bit of yellow. There we go. For the stockings. Okay, that's one color. And remember to wipe your palette knife off in between. Let's make a purple. So we'll take the alizarin crimson, we're taking it to a clean area, take a little bit of the paints gray, and make like a maroon color too. And you're going to scrape it away so you can see your color. Scrape it away so you can see your color. There you go. And wipe it off in between. So I think with those colors, we can uh, apply our, color, our paint to our mittens and our stock. We're going to use the number four eye of the tiger for applying our color because it's a smaller round brush. And remember, we don't need a lot of paint. So I'm going to load up just a little bit of that orange color. And I'm gonna just add like a dot on the left-hand side of my stock, stocking, okay? And I'm gonna take my brush, my IPC, and I'm going to blend it. And there we go, blend it in. Blend the color. Maybe I'll skip one or two, and while I have that on my brush, I can add more paint. There we go. There we go. And maybe with whatever's left on the blender, no, it wouldn't be enough. So let's add another little bit there. So it's entirely up to you what colors you want to use. Okay. But make sure you take the paint off your blender and return your brush back into your container of Q tips. Okay, we're going to put some maroon. So I'm going to take my round eye of the tiger, squeeze off that paint, and with that such a bright color, maybe I'll take a little bit of gel transparency and to clean my brush with that, just to remove a little bit of that high color. There we go. I'm going to go into the maroon, fully load, and I'm going to go back and I'm going to add to the left-hand side because that's my shadow, that's my shadow side, and I'm going to blend it in, okay? There we go. Ooh, that's a nice purple. A lot of people love purple. There you go. Okay. And blend it in. If you made a boo-boo and went right over the sides, it's only to take a Q-tip and just kind of clean up around the area. Because this hasn't been sealed yet, so it's perfectly fine. Okay. And I'm going to blend in. Those IPCs are so nice. The large and medium ones and even the small ones there. So I have all those on my website as well. Okay, so I'm going to wipe off this purple 
and maybe use a little bit of the gel transparency since I have it there and pinch it off. There we go. And I'm going to use a little bit of that wood grain color for my post. There we go. And just place it back into your container. That's the big thing because if not, you'll have a mess and be paint everywhere. Let's blend in those little posts for a clothesline. Perfect. Now down on the bottom uh, where the stones are, uh, there you can see it on my picture of really plain there actually, uh, right here, the stones. We're gonna fill those in with a little bit off the straight Payne's gray because it's a dark color. Okay, it's not as blue as the other brands. So this is really dark, almost like a black. And I'm gonna go on the inside of that C and I'm just gonna, where the lines are, I'm just gonna kind of make a C with the paint, okay? And if I hit and miss, I'm okay with that. Alrighty, return your brush, where to ladies, back into your container. It's really different being virtual, isn't it? Than when we're in class, we're, uh, by this time someone is telling a joke or whatever. And we will get back to that, you know, but this sure is a great way of reaching our painters who love to uh, paint, chapters who love to paint and things so we have to uh, we're lucky that we have this opportunity actually to be able to do it i'm going to add a little bit of dark under with the same color with my round back in the container and now i'm going to go it's underneath that house there that outhouse just to make a little dark i want it to be kind of cemented in there okay make it a little darker and you can come away with a little bit of color you don't have to stick right on the, the areas okay now i'm i added a little bit of green to my greenery this is a nighttime uh, sky because of the the moon and things too so our trees aren't really green green they're they're actually on my own picture i left them black like the ink and just added the snow to them. But I will show you how to place a little bit of green on them to mix the colors so you'll you'll see the colors. Uh, we're gonna go with the Payne's Gray in a dry clean area. And let's take a bit of yellow. And yeah, there we go, we're gonna have a nice evergreen. Wow, this brand do make a very nice evergreen. Let's put some here too. So we want more yellow, less paint spray. So you can see how we mix two colors. This is a more evergreen. This is a more of a lighter, lighter green. Okay, so we'll probably take a little bit of that. Bring it back to that one. There we go. And you're going to scrape it away. And that's the color that I was aiming for. Okay, now. We're going to pinch this off in between our paper towel and voila, there's our palette knife clean, okay? And these are things that we lay on our paper towel. Not those, those brushes are applicators if you want to, to call them. Those are the ones that we apply the color. So I'm gonna take our uh, bristle eucoustic brush and I'm going to Pinch it off in between our paper towel. Okay. And I we don't need no gel transparency now because we've got plenty in this brush. And I'm going to go into my green. There we go. And I'm just going to uh, burnish a little. I don't want a lot on this because I don't want it to uh, overpower. So I'm very lightly burnishing a little bit of green here and there. And if you can notice on my picture as well, I've got a little bit of uh, green that goes uh, out on the snow, almost like a shadow. And it looks fine. It looks perfectly fine, okay? So we're now gonna take our Deerfoot Stippler 
it's not a dear foot stippler. <laughs> we, we, it's so great to be able uh, to have a, design, a brush company that can do brushes that you can use them for a lot. Of, you don't have to strictly say, okay, that's for my acrylics. And this is a really nice fine point that you don't want to use for anything else, right? But these are great for this. I use these mainly for my oils. There we go, a Deerfoot Stippler. And you can come down in that snow if you want it to, just to make a little bit of a, because the snow is so sparse that there do be green bits of snow on that coming up from there. Okay, so we're gonna clean up this brush. And I see a white spot right there. I'm going to cover up. There we go. It's so forgiving. It's so forgiving. Okay. This one I'm going to just put over here and we're going to bring our jeans, our frozen jeans, and we're going to finish this piece. So now our wood grain on this piece, uh, it's going on the horizontal. Okay. Our um, outhouse was going up and down but our wood grain here is going on the horizontal so we're going to take our burnisher and once you've used every side of the paper towel you should get a nice clean i fold them in two and i just keep them by the side of me there and just uh, keep it as tidy as i can okay i'm going to pinch this off in between my paper towel okay and I'm going to uh, go into my wood grain because I'm really liking that dark walnut color. And a little bit of gel transparency probably because by now we've been working for a couple hours although our paints are, are good to last for our painting but you may feel they're a little sticky. Okay, and I'm, the darker part is on the sides, okay. And I'm gonna burnish. When I'm burnishing, I'm not holding up and down. I'm not, I'm on a probably 35 to 40 degree angle, okay? And you can hear me. If you listen, you can hear the burnish. You can hear the bristles on the canvas. And that's what you want to uh, be listening for. Now I'm coming down. My house is in behind those trees, so I don't want to leave it out. Okay, I don't want it to look like it's a halo. Okay. Now, put my brush back into my container. Take my IPC. Give it a swirl. And I'm going to blend on the horizontal. And the IPC is a great blender. Um, for this, I love using these for my colored pencils, my charcoal, uh, but I don't use my, once I use these in my oil, I keep these for my oil, these brushes here, because uh, even though you wash them out, soap and water clean up, you can, you know, probably get some residue if you were to go into a charcoal uh, piece on paper and stuff, right? So, but they're great for this. You can see me there. I am uh, pushing ever so lightly. I'm not really uh, pushing a lot, to be honest with you. And you can see what I just did there then. I never applied color to the slats there. I just went that way and that way. And look how cool you can see the ink went over the thing. It looks really nice. It looks like we sweated the whole day and night on this piece and we didn't. That's the secret. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Now we clean our brush. Lay it on our wall. Now I feel that my house needs uh, a little highlighting here and there. So I'm going to take my Q-tip. I'm going to go up down, turn it ever so slightly, go over it again just a little, turn your q-tip so that you're not going in the same direction 
and you will use a nice few Q-tips. Okay, you can just soften. There we go, because I didn't want it to be too, too dark. If we didn't have our piece sealed with the uh, spray, uh, you would not have been able to do this. Okay, it, would, it just wouldn't work for you, right? The harder you push, the more paint you're taking off. Okay, so then I just go with my blender and very lightly soften it again. There we go, perfect, perfect. Love it when a plan comes together, hey? Okay, now we'll go back to the jeans. You can see me here, I'm cleaning off my blender, placing it on my paper towel where they're supposed to be. I'm gonna take my round Eye the Tiger, I'm going to pinch it off in between a paper towel and let's go with a bit of red and brown. This time we're going to brush blend, okay? So I take a bit of alizarin crimson, take a bit of pain, uh, burnt umber, and mix it together. And you can see it just deepens the alizarin ever so slightly, okay? I'm loving that color of the alizarin crimson. You can use gumbacher, you can use any kind of oil paint that you have, and you'd be surprised what nice colors that you can come up with, right? Okay, I'm coming here, back into your container, make sure this is, there we go. And there we go. Now I went over there. Red is a real high pitch color, but if you get it quickly and use a little bit of gel transparency, you can remove it real fast, okay? Because once this piece is sealed, it's too late then to do anything. Okay, I'm liking that color. Maybe I'll do the other pair of jeans that color. The world is your oyster. You're not stuck with just one color. I wonder where that saying came from. Okay. There we go. Let's fill in the jeans. You notice how I'm not filling them in solid, am I? I'm just kind of going around, filling them in where there would be a shade, and then letting the highlight show through. There you go. Perfect. Uh, maybe I'm going to have one sock green and the other sock orange. How's that sound? Okay. Pinch off your small round, go into your orange, and just add a little color there. Lay it back into your container, and let's blend. we go and I went outside the lines a little bit but do I worry no I don't because I've got my q-tip and I'm going to take that off and bring a nice highlight there there you go clean off your little brush again go into the green and like I say you, you'll be mixing different colors and you just feel go for what you feel you you want to put there it's up to you back in our container and let's blend okay there you go and we'll clean this off again because we can't forget our little post I think on mine did I forget no I need um, one of the pictures I did, I forgot the little post, the brown. Okay, return it back to our container. I know I'm repeating myself over and over, and uh, but sometimes we, we need to hear it in order to keep doing it. Okay, okay, I'm liking I'm liking this one more so than my own. Anyway, it's pretty cool. Okay, um, 
I want another little bit of color off of there. There we go. Turn this around and soften them a bit. Okay, now we're to the point now where we have our oil rouging done on both of our pieces. I'm just looking at my other piece here. Um, yeah, we've got everything done when it comes to the oil portion of it. Uh, we're going to take this out in a moment and give it another two good sprays. Okay. And then we come back and do the finishing touches. on them. Okay. We're going to add the snow to the outhouse and the trees, especially the ones in front, and just a few uh, flakes of snow. Okay. So how we do that is this. We, I like to use my um, half inch, my black silver, the same one we use for the inking. I washed it, of course, with soap and water. And make sure when you wash your brushes that you use the cheapest soap possible. I like just the hotel soap, I like to say. It has no conditioners in it. Your bristles will stay really nice. And uh, there's no conditioners that will make them go all wonky. So just your hand soap and give it a good wash and you'll be fine, okay? Once you've rinsed it all out, of course, with your ammonia, got the ink out. So I poured uh, just a dollop size of uh, Americana uh, Deco Art, and it's the white, the snow white, and it's the acrylic paint, okay? Now remember, we're adding the acrylic additives. This is the last thing. Our piece has been sealed, we've sprayed, you, it, it won't damage your piece or anything, okay? You're good to go. So I don't use any water in my brush when I go to the paint. I just like to, I'm gonna move my little Q-tip thing out of the way so you can see me better here. And I fully load, not all the way up. I only go half, uh, just half, halfway up, okay? Um, so, oh. And I'm going to hold my brush perpendicular and come along, pushing it down on top of that outhouse, okay? A bit thicker on the corner and move along. I'm then going to, without adding any more paint, I'm going to start back again and just add little dips of snow here and there where it falls off the, the roof. Okay, and it does, it just falls down, especially the amount of snow that we Okay, there we go. I also wanted to put a bit of snow on the corner of the doorway, and same deal, just kind of hold it up and down. There we go, come down. Uh, I'm going to go to the trees, and I'm going to concentrate mainly with the foreground trees, okay? So the background trees, I'm just gonna leave like they are. And I'm gonna go to the trees and I'm gonna add a little bit of white paint to let them lay on the branches. And I'm not just uh, ticky tacking like I did with the ink. What I'm doing is I'm sliding it across horizontally and letting it slip in between some of those branches, okay? You may need a little bit more paint, and it's fine. And these touches are usually what adds to it, okay? And a little bit here on this little tree. And make sure you come down to the base, there you go, to make your tree look more like it's landing on something. I'm gonna go to the right-hand side, and I'm going to fill in my snow there and right here as well. There you go. Okay, I think I'll put a little bit underneath that tin bucket, a little bit on the post. There you go. And I'm fine with that. Uh, I'm gonna use the end of my paintbrush to just put into the white and I'm just gonna add a few dots, random larger dots, okay, to make snowflakes feel like they're 
coming down nice and heavy. Okay, especially in the background area there. Okay, we're going to lay that one to the side. Okay, and we're going to come back to our frozen jeans. And make sure you, you wipe your uh, end of your handle off your paintbrush, but you'll have it on your sleeve of your brand new sweater. Okay, I still never went into the water with my brush because I didn't want it to be too watery. I wanted it to be uh, nice and thick. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of snow. I went right to the outer edge of my window. There you go. And on one of the panes there, or on two of the panes I added around mine, I went there and I sliced it down. There you go. See that? And then over in the corner here, I put a little bit of extra snow there. You don't want to go too crazy with it, okay? You just want to have a little bit of snow and come away from it. Now, on this one, I went with a little bit of snow, very lightly uh, to the center uh, trees, but none on the background. I just went with a little bit of snow here and there underneath those trees in the back. Okay, there you go. I did go in the front here and really kind of added a nice bit of snow. I really did a pounce, you know, I'm pushing down heavier snow for the foreground trees. Let me see that there. I'm going to move that up. There we go. Okay, Let's see what we're doing here. Perfect. And it was just a snowy night. There we go. Um, for those little trees here, um, the sticks. Okay, now we have our white snow done, basically. The end of our paintbrush. We just went in with our few random dots, kind of cover up areas, probably, that we, well, I think did pretty good, actually. Really nice. Okay, and I'm going to rinse my brush now just so that the acrylic paint, remember this was acrylic, okay. Now, the red berries, uh, we can use a stylus, uh, don't have one here, just one in my little toolbox there I think, but we'll use a pencil. But if you've got a stylus, use a stylus for the little berries. And you can use Tuscan red, but remember, do not use the red oil paint because the thick dots will be forever to dry and you'll end up smudging them. So I load up my little pencil there and I just add dots of uh, three or five or seven. We always go on even, okay, for those little berries. And those trees don't have any leaves on them usually. They're just sticking up from the snow. And there we go. Okay. Now we're good there. Okay, so that's our piece done there. Now, sometimes I like to add a little bit of snow, extra snow. So I'll use my, just an old fan, an old scuffy fan with water, go into the, white and I'll use a heavier brush there to go out a little bit of snow just to make it a little more snowy day and also with our other one and here we go Now, before our, I turn our my uh, video up so I can talk to you for the last final minutes, I want you to uh, look at your piece. And once they're in the black frames that come with these canvases, they look really cool. So I'm just going to show you the other pattern packets that are available. 
These are the canvases like I showed at the beginning there. Put a canvas and the frame together and they're on my website or they will be on my website or if not, you just have to email me. Uh, this is another little one we did. It's a little yellow bird, which is really cute. This is the Good Day on Clothes, which is really cool too. And that got all the same techniques that we just did in all of these. And this one is uh, in the cove. Oops, turn it around. And that's another one. So there's six in total um, pattern packets, but they all use the same technique. So I'm going Well, to I just wanted to say thank you for painting with me for this virtual class. Um, it's been awesome. I love to paint. Uh, and I love to teach and I love great ideas and, and new tips and everything. But you know, it all comes with great friends. I want to thank Jill Fitzhenry, my Jilly Bean, for hosting this one for me and whatever. We could we can't live this world without good friends and friendships. I want to thank Dynasty uh, Company for making such wonderful brushes that when you do a live a live video. Uh, your brushes aren't going to fail you. So thank you to Dynasty and DecoArt using DecoArt products. They're awesome. Anyway, any questions about this class, I'm just an email away, text me, even to say hello. And I want to thank you for joining me. Have a great evening. And I hope you enjoyed painting with me. Until we meet again, take care.